You clicked on this video because you're interested in what the Bible has to say about this, either because you know the Bible has accurately predicted the future multiple times, or you believe in some or all of the Bible stories. Maybe you believe those stories because you've had supernatural experiences yourself. In any case, let's look at some scriptures that seem to indicate that we live in a simulated type reality, something like a controlled dream. Aside from the obvious points that you've already heard, such as Moses parting the Red Sea, causing all manner of plagues in Egypt, talking to a desert rock consequently causing water to pour out of it, and hearing a voice from a bush that seemed to be burning but wasn't, there are also some lesser known, peculiar bits of information in the Bible. For example, did you know that a rock also produced fire in Judges 6 and poured out rivers of oil in Job 29? This begs the question, are rocks sometimes a disguise for something else? Isaiah 2.10 advises the reader to enter the rock. Now you might think this is just a fancy way of telling us to hide in a cave, but how about this comment Isaiah made in chapter 42.11, let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Again, he's just referring to people who live in the mountains or caves in the mountains, right? Well then why use a different word for cave? In one chapter, Isaiah 2, we see at least four different words for rock and a completely different word for cave. In verse 10, the word for rock is number 6697 and also in verse 19. But verse 19 also includes the word for cave, number 4247. So 6697 does not refer to a cave. If you look at the actual definition of the word, nowhere does it mean cave. So the question remains, how does one enter or exit a rock? Not a cave, but an actual rock. How about this one in Song of Solomon 2.14? The clefts of the rock has the secret place of the stairs. So if this refers to a cave, it certainly isn't a natural one if it has stairs. And these biblical caves are definitely not your average cave either. For example, the cave that Joseph apparently carved out himself to bury Jesus in Matthew 27. You know, the one that the guards watched over all night to make sure no one took Jesus out and then later it was opened and Jesus wasn't there. How the heck did Joseph carve out a cave by himself in that short of a time frame? Even with God's help, this is still mysterious. These weird Bible rocks can produce an opening overnight, pour out oil or water, cook a meal, provide living quarters for a bunch of people, and even bring the dead back to life. Jesus went into one dead and came back out alive, apparently. And while we're on that topic, what was it Jesus said about our world? He said that whatever you desire, if you believe in your heart that you will receive it, you will have it. He said this even applies to moving mountains. I understand that God is great, but why would God move a mountain for one person? I mean, couldn't it harm someone else who just happens to be in the way? I mean, it definitely would harm some animals, right? When we really think about that, it doesn't seem like something a loving God would do unless that mountain is really just code in God's computer. And don't forget how Jesus entered this world. He was born out of a virgin womb. And one of the words for womb in the Old Testament is, get this, matrix. Exodus 12, 13 through 15, all that open the matrix, all the firstborn of the children. Exodus 34, 19, all that open the matrix are mine, every firstling. In Numbers 3.12, all the firstborn that opened the matrix among the children of Israel. This word translated as matrix, number 7358, means womb. But there are other words for womb in the Old Testament, such as word 990. So maybe matrix does refer to something else. The womb is also the opening of the matrix. Jesus opened the matrix to enter this world. The womb is the entrance, the opening of the matrix. So entering this world is opening the matrix. But what is this world? 
is the world itself the matrix as defined in the famous movie or is it a dream isaiah says in chapter 29 verses 7 and 8 that the multitude of nations that fight against ariel shall be as a dream it shall be as when a hungry man dreams that he eats but when he wakes up he's still hungry job says in chapter 20 verses 5 and 8 that the wicked will fly away as a dream and not be found if they fly away like in a dream well in a dream they would just disappear they would be there one minute and be gone in the next in psalm 73 it says again the wicked will be brought into desolation in a moment as a dream when one awakens so when you wake up you will despise their image there's something deep happening here deeper than what we'll look at in this video but it's clear that the wicked will be removed just like a bad dream and this one almost seems to imply that we're having the bad dream so that when we wake up we'll despise the bad dream in chapter 126 of psalms again it says when the lord turned again the captivity of zion we were like them that dreamed turn again meaning revoke their captivity in other words set them free so when they were set free they were like them who dream okay so some dreamers have dreams of freedom and others like in jude 1 6 through 8 are filthy dreamers the angels who did not keep their first estate but left their habitation they are filthy dreamers and this word number 1797 literally means dream or filthy dreamer and it stems from word 1798 a dream which stems from two words translated as in sleep so that leads into the biblical reference of the wicked being asleep but we also see a dream of freedom mentioned where the wicked disappear so is what jesus said about moving mountains literally true if it is then we most certainly are in a dream or simulation and if so can we influence it or control it as jesus said thank you to everyone who continues to support this work if you like this video and want to see more like it please consider providing support using the link below i hope you're doing well and we'll continue this hopefully next week